My project was to incorporate physics concepts and create an instrument that produced sound. I originally tried to make a harp, but eventually decided on creating a model guitar. So this is the model guitar here that I created. The materials that I used were an old Scrabble box, a two feet long plank of wood, guitar strings, ring nails, a four inch long by one inch high block, and the metal frames. I first used an electric razor to cut a hole on top of the Scrabble box. I then used the epoxy glue to make sure the cover didn't fall off. Next, I used an electronic screwdriver and made four holes on the small wooden block to give the strings a base. I glued that down to the cover as well, to the Scrabble box, to make sure that the tension of the strings would not pull the block off. I used a long plank of the neck of the guitar to create a fingerboard where I can create different pitches. I used the metal frames to screw them onto the side of the guitar. So this was very effective in keeping that in place. I then screwed the rings onto the end of the guitar to create basic tuners that you can find on the guitar. I tied the strings to the metal ring and then began to tighten. This made creating sounds on the guitar much easier. Lastly, I sanded any rough parts of the guitar. In summary, the rings were used to create tension and tighten the strings. The neck was used to create a fingerboard for the strings. The box was used to create a chamber for the sound. And the block was used to hold the strings in place and create a good distance between the strings as well. Because this is an instrument, I made a way to adjust the volume and the pitch of the sound. The harder that you pluck, the louder the sound is produced. I'll explain the science behind this towards the end. It takes more pressure to pluck the thicker strings than the thinner ones simply because they are heavier. To create a different pitch, you can do one of two things. First, you can tighten the string with the metal rings at the top of the guitar neck to make the string tighter. You can also loosen the strings at the top. However, you can also place your finger on the fingerboard in order to create different pitches. The closer it is to the hole, the higher the pitch gets. I'm also going to explain this physics concept towards the end. Let's talk about section 4-1. In section 4-1, we talked about the characteristics of a wave and the different parts of a wave. The guitar that I made reflects the concepts introduced in 4-1. The different parts of a wave were useful when talking about the strings. If you look closely enough, you can see the parts of a wave. However, the strings are also a very good example of one of the study points on the 4-1 lesson. The sound waves are an example of longitudinal waves. We learned this in the lesson that longitudinal waves are parallel to their direction of travel. This is well shown by the strings. The first lesson was just a very good introduction to how waves look and the different parts of a wave. The equations we learned to calculate frequency can also prove which noise has a higher pitch. Let's move on to section 4-2. In section 4-2, we learned about how different parts of the wave, such as frequency, wave speed, wave length, and amplitude affect each other. In 4-2, we did labs creating charts on the data we collected on how the different parts of a wave affect each other. We learned that frequency affects the wavelength. This is important to the guitar because that means that different pitches and the placement of the finger on the fingerboard does not affect the wavelength. We also learned that the amplitude did not affect any other factors. In other words, even if you pluck the strings very hard, it will not affect the pitch but instead the volume. This is a concept to keep in mind when plucking the guitar. The lesson in 4-3 is a very important lesson because it explains the sounds of the guitar. 4-3 explained a lot about vibrations. 4-3, we learned that vibrations are made by the waves that it provides. We learned about the different mediums where sound travels best. However, the most important concept from that lesson was that the less tension there is, the slower the rope. We learned that this uh, concept determines pitch. This helps to understand the tuners on the guitar. The end of the neck of the guitar has metal links that can twist left and right. When it is twisted to the left, it gets looser, meaning that there is less tension. This creates a lower sound. When it is twisted to the right, the tension gets higher and the pitch goes up as well. This is important in not only tuning the strings, but to change the different pitches on the strings to play different chords and notes. In section 4-4, we learn that when the frequency gets higher, the waves look more defined and thinner. This is very interesting because you can actually see this happen on the guitar. We learned about the frequency that humans can hear, but most importantly, talked about how waves look when they are produced. We learned that the louder a wave is, the larger it looks. This is because the amplitude controls the volume. The amplitude is the distance from the equilibrium line, which gives it the look. 
The higher the pitch, the more jumbled and close the waves are to each other because of the concept of frequency we learned also in 4-1. In section 4-5, we learned about constructive and deconstructive interference. This is important because it helps to understand the sound that comes from the guitar. Sounds that humans can hear from the guitar are those with pitches not only in the human frequency, but also constructive interference and standing waves. Many destructive sounds either cancel out or are barely audible, which is why when playing the guitar, you hear mostly only the constructive and standing waves. This concept is also partly the reason why I created the chamber. The chamber reflects the sound, and the sounds that we can hear are only barely audible or completely destructive or destructive interference. The sound also gets louder in the chamber because the sounds we do hear are constructive interference. In lesson 4-6, we learned about the standing waves and nodes. Let's first talk about the standing waves. Many sounds heard from instruments are standing waves. They are formed by interference. In class, we drew diagrams about what the waves would look like on string instruments and wind instruments. The shorter it is, the higher the pitch. This also addresses the fingerboard. The higher your finger goes towards the end of the fingerboard or closer to the circle in the center, the pitch goes higher. And the further away from the end of the fingerboard would result in lower frequency. This is essential to creating music by utilizing the different pitches. This was overall a very fun and pretty interesting project. Thank you.